Antonio was madly in love with his girlfriend Caroline. They had been dating for almost three months and lately there was talk of a wedding. In fact, Carolina had become his fiancée. And everything would have gone well, they could have been preparing to get married. But something was worrying Antonio, lately, he had noticed that she was speaking surreptitiously on the phone, and that she had disappeared without giving any explanation. On one hand, it was understandable, maybe the girl was worried, so she was giving herself a break in the form of a few days away. But the problem is that he didn't tell Antonio where he was. And this led her fiancé to think that they were simply cheating on him. At the same time, he could not openly tell her about it, he did not want to spoil the wedding and spoil the relationship in general. Antonio came from a wealthy family, but he was not considered a wealthy man. He knew how to appreciate and count money. And no more was allowed than was worth spending. For example, some acquaintances in his circle gave cars to loved ones. Antonio saw it as a show of cockiness. And he was right, things didn't get better between them. The girls only acquired a taste for them and demanded more and more expensive gifts. In his youth he was left without parents, who died in a car accident. His grandfather, Pedro, raised him. He taught his grandson to be sensible and also to be thrifty. And this despite the fact that Antonio could afford not to worry about anything at all. The business of the deceased parents was booming and generating a good income. However, his grandfather did not allow him to spend money left and right. In this way, he created a safety cushion for his grandson for the future. In this light he had his doubts about the bride. Too many factors came together. Antonio remembered how his grandfather had calculated everything in a few moves. I used to say things like this. You have to feel your partner, imagine yourself as a chess player. And figure out what move to make next to be the king. His grandfather taught him many things and, above all, to see through people. It could be said that Peter taught him literally. But he had been dead for two years. For this reason, armed with his grandfather's teachings and advice, Antonio decided to go see Carolina. And he agreed with a family friend, or rather a person very close to his grandfather, who worked as a manager in a private clinic, to move in with him for a while. Antonio was admitted to a fictitious hospital and Daniel did what he could. He was like a substitute for his parents and made sure Antonio didn't feel alone. At the same time, the godson's request surprised him. Are you sure it will help you? Daniel asked. I think so, Antonio said calmly, at least that way I can put my feelings to the test. You know, what you have done, how to put it gently. The master wanted to continue, but hesitated. Well, that was not finished, you mean cynical. Antonio said the word instead. To be honest, yes. Said Daniel, I just haven't found it. My Agatha and I have been together for almost thirty years and there was no reason for mistrust between us. It's true, you've been together for thirty years. Antonio supported him. And I have not yet formed a family. And I want to know if my fiancé is hiding something from me. Didn't I tell you what's been going on lately? Yes, 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 I remember. Said the director, well, then we will proceed as agreed. But if it's not my fault, I don't want Caroline to hate me for the rest of her life. Thanks Daniel. Antonio shook his hand. The director had prepared a private room for the man. He deliberately did not let the staff know that the patient was someone close to him. I didn't want to spoil the comedy, 
because the nurses might have accidentally tipped off. As agreed, Daniel prepared false documents about his state of health. And he called Caroline personally to tell her that Antonio was in a coma. From the outside it might seem that the godson was an extreme man and liked practical jokes. And he was right about something, but only that Antonio wasn't afraid of anything. His grandfather had taught him to look fear square in the eye and not to back down a step. In this situation, Antonio did what his intuition told him. At the same time, it did not interfere with common sense and drew certain conclusions. At the time of the supervisor's call, Caroline was at the party. She didn't even seem concerned that something might have happened to her fiancé. After learning from Daniel that Antonio was in a coma, the girl hurried to arrive. She was received by the administration and taken to the room. The director of the room entered with her. The patient was lying on a special functional bed, but unconscious. There was a tripod with a dropper and the machines were beeping on both sides, showing the general condition of the patient. Caroline covered her mouth with her hand and Daniel thought she was going to cry. He took a handkerchief from the pocket of his robe and handed it to the girl. Pick it up, or your mascara will run all over your face. No thanks, I've got it under control. She refused. Doctor, how did it happen? She passed out in the car while driving. Daniel answered calmly. It was an accident, what horror. Caroline almost exclaimed with round eyes. No, there was no accident. Before passing out Antonio stepped on the brake and the car stopped in the middle of the road. The police were passing by and found him. How long will he stay in this state? Caroline asked excitedly, pointing to the sleepy Antonio. I still can't say for sure, Daniel said. It all depends on Antonio's body and the effectiveness of the treatment. Well, at least approximately. Caroline stood her ground. Maybe a few days, maybe even months. He shrugged and answered. It seems terrible, terrible, Caroline said again. And we were going to get married, right? I have already informed all my relatives that I am getting married. What are we going to do now, doctor? We just have to wait, honey. Daniel replied, patting him on the shoulder. Well, I'll leave you alone, you have to think about it. Yes, of course, that's very kind of you, Caroline agreed. Daniel looked quickly at Antonio, raising his eyebrows. And from this look Godson almost gave himself away. He not only listened, but also witnessed the events. She had not only heard it, but had been watching it, so Caroline hadn't noticed. And when the Godfather turned his gaze on him, he almost laughed. It took a great effort to contain himself and continue pretending to be asleep. Leaving the room, Daniel sighed deeply and said to himself in a low voice, Do not notice anything. At that moment, a nurse was passing by, who whispered something to the head of the ward and asked cautiously, Do you want something, Daniel? No, not yet, go to work. He greeted her and went to his office. When she was alone, Caroline sat on the edge of the bed and took Antonio's hand in hers. She looked at him carefully and smiled slightly. Maybe it was a defensive reaction. In any case, that's what Antonio thought when he noticed the smile on her face. He showed great talent when he continued to imitate the man in a coma. He had to stay very still and not react in any way to external stimuli. Caroline poked him with a pin on purpose, probably to see if he was in a coma. Antonio could barely bear the pain. 
not a muscle flinched on his face. And his hand didn't jerk back, as it often does when you stick a sharp object into your skin. No, Antonio had played his part brilliantly. It only remained to wait and see what the bride would do next. It didn't take long for her to take her phone out of her bag and make a call. Antonio pricked up his ears. The girlfriend waited for the interlocutor to answer and began to lull him. Hello, yes, I missed you too. We can't wait to be together, right? The interlocutor seemed to respond positively, and Caroline continued. You're not going to believe it, honey, but that rich guy ended up in the hospital by his own foot, I didn't even have to poison him. Antonio was almost beside himself and jumped out of bed when he heard his fiancée say that. What he really didn't expect was his own death. It seemed that Caroline was planning an attack on him and was going to use poison, but his coma had saved him from that execution. It was terrifying to even imagine what he had to experience. Antonio's knees were shaking under the blanket. But Caroline didn't notice because she kept cooing into the phone. It's almost in the bag, the bride continued. It only remains to fix it with the nurse and inject something into the line. Antonio's heartbeat increased, but luckily the machines were only simulating work. Otherwise Caroline would have complained and called a doctor. But everything went well, and Antonio was able to cope with the emotion. At the same time, he was shocked that the girlfriend planned to use the nurse for the murder. It seems that he had his doubts about her for a reason. And it was good that Antonio mimicked the coma, so he managed to deduce the truth about Caroline. At the same time, he decided not to reveal himself yet, he had to give his fiancée time to be active. The girl finished talking on the phone, gave him a kiss on the cheek and left the room. A few minutes later Daniel entered. Well, how was the audience with the bride? Bad, very bad. Antonio replied harshly. What's wrong, he didn't even cry. The manager asked jokingly, not realizing what had actually happened. You won't believe it, Godfather, but she wanted to kill me, Antonio said through tears. Wow, this is the number. Daniel said, shaking his head. In some unexpected way, but in what way did he express himself, well, his desire to kill you? Antonio told his godfather that Caroline had been talking to someone on the phone. She lulled the subscriber so much that it was not difficult to guess that she could be a lover. She confessed to him that she did not have to poison the boyfriend, because he himself was in the hospital. At this point, Antonio paused and then continued. And the most disgusting thing is that Carolina was going to negotiate with the nurse so that she injected me with something in the dropper. Don't be afraid, this definitely won't happen, Daniel assured her. All the procedures, well, you yourself understand that they are fake, supposedly Adeline will do them for you. She has already been warned of everything, and apart from her, no member of the medical staff will come here to see you. And if Carolina... Antonio suggested. She won't do anything to you, the manager replied, putting his hand on her shoulder. It will not be possible to agree with the nurses, I control them completely. And in food, it will not add anything, because you will receive it from the restaurant. My relative works there, you know him, David Hugo's. Yes, Uncle David often came to visit his grandfather. Anthony nodded his head. Well, that means there's nothing to worry about, concluded Daniel. By the way, maybe you should report her to the police. No, you don't need to do that yet. Antonio stopped him with a wave of his hand. We will see what he does, and then we will act according to the situation. 
Well, as you say, Godson, smiled the Godfather. In any case, I am in my office, and in case of urgent need, call the phone immediately. Thank you, Uncle Daniel, I really appreciate it. Victor thanked him. The manager walked out of the room again, leaving him alone. Antonio really needed to think seriously. And first of all about what to do with Carolina. It would be more correct, of course, to open up and say there is no comma and part with the girlfriend. But something told Antonio that this role was worth playing to the end. The inner instinct said that interesting events awaited him. At the same time, the question remained unresolved, with whom did Carolina speak? It would be reasonable to assume that the lover, she lulled him so sweetly. However, Antonio also suggested another option, the subscriber could be an accomplice of his girlfriend. And in this case, the situation escalated, because he would have agreed to kill Antonio instead. And nobody would have noticed anything since everyone would have expected action from Carolina. Thinking of this, Antonio braced himself for any twist and turn. And he carefully checked all the food delivered to him from the restaurant. There was a laboratory in the clinic, and the nurse Adeline, at his request, handed it over for analysis. But nothing was found there, and Antonio calmly ate it all. Several days had passed since Caroline had visited him. She did not appear again, and this suggested that the bride was cooking something. In eager anticipation of any action on his part, Antonio decided to hire a detective. There was one such agency in the city, in which his acquaintance worked. Pablo arrived the same day that Antonio called him. Not understanding what was happening, he first ran to the bed and stammered, God, what have your competitors done to you? Yes, calm down, Pablo. Antonio smiled back. Everything is entourage, so it should be. I decided to check the girlfriend, and it turned out that he wanted to poison me. Can't be, Caroline. Asked the surprised detective. That's how it is. Antonio agreed. And what do you plan to do now? I want you to ask about her. Anthony suggested. Gather everything you can find. And most importantly, look at what it does. He hasn't come to see me for several days. How could you think of something illegal? I understand. I will do everything. The detective agreed. Don't worry about your safety, it's under control. Yes, here the godson watches over me. Antonio fired. Nothing, my help in this matter won't hurt either, insisted the detective. Okay, Pablo, I hope everything goes well for you. Antonio patted him on the shoulder. Do not even doubt it, the detective agreed. I will try to collect as much information about her as possible. After staying with him for another twenty minutes, Detective Pablo left. Nurse Adeline appeared next and brought juice. Daniel asked to come in. Thank you and give my regards. Anthony thanked him. The nurse left and he wondered again if he had done the right thing in starting this game. On the one hand, I learned a lot about the girlfriend, on the other hand, I ruined my happiness. After all, there was no talk of any wedding now. In light of these events, it was worth thinking about his own safety. Carolina, as she realized, was still that fruit. And she could use any option to send him to the other world. At the same time, unexpectedly, within the walls of this clinic, he met a childhood friend. Sylvia worked here as a surgeon, just in a different department. Three years ago, her son and husband died in an accident. It happened during their joint fishing trip. 
Sylvia then dissuaded Andre from going, because it was raining outside the window. But her husband assured her that the weather would improve and nothing would bother them. How he felt in his heart that they shouldn't have left, and two hours later he was informed that an accident had occurred. Sylvia was literally tearing her hair out, so her sister accompanied her. Virtually nothing was left of the car, just a charred skeleton. The policeman did not let her approach the wreckage of the car. The doctors were still there, collecting the dead in black bags. The funeral took place three days later, and Sylvia could barely contain herself during the farewell ceremony. Sister Maria was also next to her, she did not leave a single step. After the funeral, Sylvia came to her senses for a week, trying to come to terms with the fact that her husband and son were no more. Having become a widow, she vowed to start a relationship with someone again. For her, all men in the world ceased to exist. As for Antonio, once, in their school years, there was a teenage romance between them, which ended in nothing. They met, they spent time together, they helped each other with their homework. But in the end, after school, they went their separate ways. By the way, it was Maria who often passed Sylvia's notes. In them, she spoke of great feelings and plans for the future. Soon Antonio left to enter another city and finally the communication between them ceased. Sylvia became a medical student and decided to pursue a career as a doctor. He liked chemistry and biology since school. The teachers unanimously stated that if she is not a great scientist, then a highly qualified specialist will emerge from her. In principle, almost everything turned out that way. Only instead of an academic degree, Sylvia received the position of a surgeon. Knowing that Antonio was in his clinic, he rushed to visit him. And what was his surprise when, instead of a comatose patient, he suddenly found himself a completely healthy and vigorous man? Naturally, she immediately had a question. And how to understand it, Antonio? I will explain everything to you now, he responded with a shrug. You see, I have doubts about my fiancé. Carolina has been acting strange lately, and recently it turned out that she wanted to kill me. Are you serious? Sylvia asked in surprise. Yes, Anthony agreed. So I had to play a comatose patient. Yes, you came up with an original way, Sylvia said with a smile. And I, like a madman, ran to your ward. I thought that you were really in a serious condition. In a hurry, you say? Antonio asked in a playful tone. Well, he walked fast, replied Sylvia uncertain and blushing. Understood, Antonio nodded affirmatively and thought to himself, it seems that he hasn't forgotten me. These thoughts only indicated that Antonio assumed sympathy between them. And he was not mistaken, Sylvia offered not only to take part in his comedy, but also to court. And the first thing she did was bring food from home herself. As a consequence, Antonio had to give up the services of the restaurant. But he didn't regret it at all, because Sylvia was a wonderful cook. Finally, he realized that he too had developed a liking for her. Immediately, I remembered my school years and dates under the moon. Antonio was even glad that everything turned out that way. At the same time, he kept anxiously awaiting news from the detective. Pablo over the phone promised to provide a report in the near future. And the detective's voice for some reason trembled, which did not bode well. At the same time, Antonio chose the moment to walk with Sylvia. The closed territory of the clinic allowed this to be done. But in order not to open up, they went for a walk at night. 
At this time, all the medical staff watched their favorite series. And it was unlikely that Carolina would show up because, as far as Antonio knew, she liked to go to discos. He also went there a couple of times, but he didn't like it. A few days later, the detective arrived with primary information. It was clear from his face that the news was not very good. After drinking some water from a glass that was on the nightstand, Pablo said, I want to tell you Antonio right away that Carolina is watching your condition. Why do you think that? Antonio asked, frowning. I watched her for a long time and systematized all her steps, replied the detective Dash, and once I saw Carolina with a lawyer. Well, so what? Maybe she decided to draw up a marriage contract. Anthony suggested. I would, but I went through everything and found out that this lawyer was making his way over his business, Pablo said with emotion in his voice. Antonio, I feel like Caroline is getting close to your money. Is this interesting? Crossing his arms, Antonio crossed the room. So you're saying that you hired a lawyer to squeeze my fortune? Maybe I haven't figured it out yet, the detective replied. But that's not all I wanted to tell you. Don't tell me he went to a funeral home. Antonio asked with a smile on his face. No, I saw Carolina with another man, Paul replied, shaking his head. She was discussing something with him vividly, but I did not hear what exactly, because it was impossible to get closer. Most likely, they are in a close relationship, in short, lovers. Maybe you're right, Antonio said thoughtfully. She was talking to someone nicely on the phone then. And everything can be that only with the man with whom you saw her. We should learn as much as possible what kind of person he is and what plans he has. That's what I do, Antonio, replied the detective. But I need time, Caroline doesn't show up in public that often. And getting close to her is simply impossible. She has become suspicious and is constantly changing her route. That is how. Antonio said means that he is really up to something. So you have to hurry, otherwise we may be late. The detective promised to speed up, however, Antonio was not happy with the information received from him. He didn't expect Carolina to decide to take the business away from him. And this despite the fact that she didn't really know if her fiancé would come back to reality or not. The doctor said it could take days or even months. And Carolina, most likely, decided to force things so as not to be left with nothing. Antonio wanted to go all out and open up, calling his girlfriend. But following Sylvia's advice, I decided to wait a little longer. In addition, Carolina has not yet made any attempts to get rid of him. He continued to meet with that man and consult with lawyers. Detective Pablo recorded everything carefully and informed Antonio. Unfortunately, he still didn't have much to share. A few more days passed, but no one bothered him. Or rather, they did not come and did not kill. It seemed as if the bride and her lover had changed their minds. At the same time, the feeling of fear still remained, and Antonio expected a capture at any moment. He had already mentally prepared himself for the final outcome. However, he could not stand it and decided to stop this comedy. After calling the detective, Antonio told Nurse Adeline to call Carolina and call her urgently to the clinic. The girl was not happy with the fact that she had to part with important matters. She has just started preparing the ground to crush the boyfriend's business by herself. And then an urgent invitation to the clinic, Carolina expected to see something there, but not Antonio's resurrection. 
his return to reality was not part of his plans. Carolina hoped that the doctor was not wrong and that Antonio would have to spend at least a few months in a coma. With these thoughts he arrived at the clinic, brazenly opened the door of the ward and almost collapsed on the floor. Antonio lay down on the bed with his eyes open and smiled. And next to him stood a nurse and straightened the pillow. Caroline was speechless for a moment, not knowing what to say. Then Antonio took action on the matter and said, Well, hello, dear, I probably missed you while they forced me to sleep. I can't believe my eyes the miracles that medicine can do, was all Caroline could reply. What's more, I just found out that they raised the dead. Antonio decided to joke. Yes, but in my case, I didn't have to do anything at all. Don't you understand what all this means? Caroline asked angrily. I wasn't in a coma, I just did a comedy. Antonio replied. And why did you need it? You see, I have doubts about your confidence. Anthony continued. You often left, without explaining where and why, secretly talked with someone on the phone. These are my women's affairs, Caroline tried to say. I didn't get on you when you were talking to friends. Yes it is, agreed Antonio. But lately, unnecessary spending and incomprehensible actions on your part have become more frequent. So I decided to pretend to be a comatose patient. Then he told him everything he already knew, especially about talking on the phone in the living room, meeting another man and trying to take over his business, and intentions to poison him. Antonio laid out the facts step by step, thus confirming that he had organized surveillance on her. Carolina only managed to open her mouth, but he didn't even let her insert a word. Antonio was very angry with Carolina, for that reason, he gave wings to what turns on the light. Finally, he ended up with evidence of his infidelity and suspicious behavior. Antonio took a deep breath and asked, Well, what do you say to that now? Carolina was confused at first, she did not expect such pressure. But then he took her hands, put her hips on his hips and snapped back. I can tell a lot if you listen. I am listening to you carefully, Antonio said, frowning. Yes, bastard, you ruined my whole life. Caroline began, fixing an evil look on him. Wait, what am I doing here? Antonio asked in surprise, spreading his hands out in front of him. The nurse also tensed, noting how Caroline's face was flushed with anger. He stood between her and Antonio just in case. Thus, the bride was a little further from the bed. But that did not stop him from continuing with his story. That's right, I broke my whole life. Your father got my mother pregnant and married your mother. You were already a year old when you got together and started living together. What are you looking at? Did I surprise you? Honestly, yes. Antonio replied, breathing hard. I did not think that I would have to learn such a truth. You were not his, Caroline continued, and you don't deserve to be a millionaire at all. Why is everything for you and not for me? After these words, Caroline began to cry and sat down in the chair where the nurse had recently sat. Adeline moved away from the bed, realizing that Antonio was no longer in danger. But just in case, I removed all sharp and sharp objects. He left them alone, but he didn't quite close the door to the room. Still, he had some concerns. Meanwhile, Antonio was surprised to hear Carolina's story. She couldn't believe her dead father wasn't hers. At the same time, certain oddities were present in his appearance. 
Right, then Antonio paid little attention to this. After all, his parents were blonde and he was brown. On the other hand, among the relatives there were people with a similar hair color. And Antonio thought that he had taken away part of their genes, like heredity. In any case, he had no other explanation at the time why his mother and father were blonde, but he was not. So it turned out that the girlfriend did not lie when she told about it. Antonio got up from the bed and approached Caroline. I didn't know, he said, putting a hand on her shoulder. To be honest, I was looking for you specifically to get revenge, admitted the bride. I had to pay to make inquiries and find out his exact location. After all, your father went with you to another city to start everything from scratch there. And he did it, he created a business, he provided for you, but he forgot about me. Yes, it is the situation. Antonio responded with a deep sigh. But don't forget you wanted to kill me. Sorry. I was about to, Caroline tried to explain. It's like a demon has taken over me. I myself did not understand what I was doing, and it's good that nothing went so far with us. That's for sure, otherwise I would not have forgiven myself for this, Antonio said, raising his hands to his face. We both almost made a fatal mistake and we have to fix it. What do you suggest? Caroline asked carefully, wiping away her tears. I'm going to involve the lawyers today to prepare the transfer of half my fortune. But is this more than he bargained for? All right. Antonio waved his hand. I don't need someone else's, besides, you are legally entitled to a part of the business. Am I the only one who has a request for you? Which? Caroline asked, rolling her eyes. Dispose of this state wisely, answered Antonio, letting Carolina know that he was not indifferent to her fate. I hope you understand what my words mean. Yes, I understand, Antonio. Carolina nodded and left the room. The man felt a heaviness in his heart. It seems that everything has been clarified and, at the same time, many unresolved issues remain. And why her father, though not hers, left her daughter without support in the first place. After all, he couldn't help but understand that the first family also needed money. No, there was something wrong here. And it seemed the whole problem was with Caroline's mother just so that the father did not leave his first wife with a child. The wrong man was Nicholas Alfredo. Antonio remembered how he treated him and his mother with reverence. The father hovered around him, trying to provide them with everything they needed. Not a day went by when Antonio didn't have a gift. Nicholas did not save money for this, which indicates that he respected family values. Soon the lawyers prepared the documents and called Antonio. He made it to the office, where Caroline came next. She was alone, without the man the detective had seen her with. Antonio was not interested in knowing where the man was and simply signed an agreement with her about the division of spheres of influence in business. True, Carolina offered to let him have the last word. He had little experience in trading, therefore he preferred to receive dividends. Antonio agreed with his proposal, especially since this was his direct benefit. He remained the actual owner of the company, but at the same time shared part of the profit with Carolina. This state of affairs allowed him to calmly conduct business. And don't worry that the stepsister will suddenly derail everything. That this could happen, he did not even doubt. After that, it was as if a stone fell from his soul. Antonio honestly shared part of the inheritance with Carolina. 
They buried the axe that hung over them like a sword of Damocles. The stepsister swore that she didn't even think of sending him to that world. Yes, at first there were such thoughts, but then I realized that they would definitely not pat me on the head for this. Most likely, at some point, the fear of losing freedom outweighed the scales. Antonio forgave Carolina, but warned her not to commit any fraud. In addition, he transferred to his account part of the money he received from his father. Together they went to his grave, where he was buried next to his mother. Caroline stood on the tombstone and wept, muttering something under her breath. Apparently, he was trying to explain himself to his father, who abandoned them many years ago. After all these events subsided, Antonio continued to meet with Sylvia. They felt good together, even though they had made a promise of no more men. Sylvia was an orphan, but not because she grew up in an orphanage. No, it's that all his relatives died and no one was left. My parents passed away very, very early, very young. The loss of loved ones left its mark on Sylvia. He preferred more and more to distance himself from new acquaintances. However, with Antonio it was different, Sylvia was not afraid to spend her free time with him. They went out of town on weekends and rested in nature. Antonio told him how he dreamed of having a family, but nothing came of it. In fact, he was projecting his thoughts onto his relationship with Sylvia. From the outside, it seemed as if they weren't lost at all and this interval of time was nothing more than a test of strength. At the same time, Antonio did not leave alone the question, who is his real father? If Nicholas Alfredo got together with his mother when he was born, then why didn't his mother say anything to him? Naturally, none of them will talk about this. Antonio just assumed that his biological father must have done something wrong with his mother so she broke up with him to erase this person from her life. Reflections on this topic led him to the fact that his mother, most likely, was forced to do it. And he had no right to condemn her, because she gave him life. And with the arrival of Nicholas in their family, financial problems disappeared by themselves. And here you just had to come to terms with the fact that the mother made the right choice. At least, Antonio transmitted concepts such as hunger, cold and poverty. The question about the father remained unresolved, but Antonio decided to put it aside for the moment. Relations with Sylvia demanded more and more attention. The childhood sweetheart was addictive with its romance and outlook. And it seemed that the end was near, you could think about the wedding. Also, Sylvia somehow hinted that she would like to connect her fate with a strong-willed and strong man. Once they were walking in a park where there was a small pond with ducks and they accidentally found a duffel bag on the shore. It was moving everywhere, as if it had come to life of its own. Antonio carefully went down the grass to see what was there. And what was his surprise when a small puppy was found in the bag? Victor couldn't look at this calmly, and Sylvia walked over and nearly burst into tears. The cub looked at them cutely with shiny black eyes. And with just one look, you could be touched. Antonio and Sylvia decided to take the puppy. It wasn't his fault that the previous owners treated him that way. Not otherwise, they were bad people, maybe monsters. Well, who in their right mind would throw a pet in a bag? Most likely, they expected him to die by drowning in a pond. The same day, they brought the puppy home. And while Sylvia bathed him in the bathtub, Antonio prepared a treat for him. A small ball of wool happily began to eat what was in the bowl. Looking at this creature, Antonio said tenderly, Let's call him Adrian. I like it, I agree, Sylvia replied. 
You can't imagine how hard it was for me to see him roll around in a bag, Antonio said thoughtfully. Only monsters do that, Sylvia replied with mischief in her voice. But now the puppy is safe and nothing threatens him. Yes, for him this is the most important thing now, Antonio agreed. By the way, how is your stepsister? Sylvia suddenly asked. I don't know, Antonio shrugged his shoulders. It seems that she continues to live with this scoundrel. But it is important to me that she does not meddle in business, be content with dividends and keep quiet. Do you think that she will not mature a new cunning plan? No, Carolina got what she wanted. Anthony shook his head. I'm sure of that, and you don't have to worry. Let's think about how we continue to live. I only see the family if you are talking about the future, Sylvia replied with a smile. I see it that way too, to be honest, Antonio supported her. Then we will move in that direction. They spent the whole day putting the puppy in order. Just in case, they took him to the vet. The doctor examined the pet, did the vaccinations and said that it was normal. In addition, he gave recommendations on the best way to care for him so that he gains weight faster. The puppy was very emaciated, it seems that the former owners, before throwing it away, also starved it to death. In general, the puppy got used to Sylvia and Antonio, and became something like a baby. Adrian finally got over the shock he experienced just a week later. He was no longer whimpering, as he had been in the first few days, and he was not running restlessly around the apartment. The pet lay imposingly in the basket that Antonio had bought for it and her whole appearance begged to have her abdomen stroked. Sylvia did not deny Andrian this joy. Another week passed, Antonio held several meetings with investors, they were successful and lucrative contracts were closed. Carolina went to sea with her gentlemen and there she rested well. Sylvia was given a new position, assistant chief medical officer of the clinic. Under his rule, some rules were changed and, first of all, about the provision of medical care to socially disadvantaged citizens. It meant that she allowed even the homeless to receive. In this, Sylvia saw her involvement in their lives. After all, no one was immune to such twists of fate. Antonio approved his idea and allocated funds for this purpose. He became a patron of the clinic and periodically bought medicines and even equipment there. Slowly, the lives of Antonio and Sylvia began to take on new meanings and led to the adoption of a transcendental decision. The other day Antonio was going to propose to me. He bought wedding rings in advance and chose a country house as the venue. However, these plans had to be postponed because one day Sylvia came home upset. Antonio set the table and then asked what happened. Do you have a problem at work? How can I tell you? I was powerless in surprise, Sylvia replied uncertainly. Something I really don't understand, what is it? Antonio said, frowning. They brought us a man directly from the street. Sylvia began to tell, after all, I allowed them to treat beggars. Well, yes, I remember, Anthony agreed. Well, the head doctor almost kicked out the bum, Sylvia continued. I had to argue with him for a long time about this. And you defended your innocence? Anthony asked. Yes, but with great difficulty. The girl agreed. But the saddest thing is that this man needs an urgent blood transfusion. What's wrong? Can you tell me more? Anthony asked. Sylvia told him that the man had been brought in for lunch. 
he was found unconscious. And since she herself gave the go-ahead to treat beggars, she had to accept this patient. There were no documents with him, but Sylvia drew attention to the old tattoos. It looks like they were made when they were young. But the worst thing is that the homeless man was wounded, cut on the right side. Under his leadership, he was operated on and the wound was stitched up. Partially, as far as possible, stabilized his condition. However, a blood transfusion was required. But it found a rare group, it was not possible to find it among the donor base. Upon learning of this, Antonio exclaimed, So I have the same blood. Are you serious? Sylvia asked in bewilderment, especially since she couldn't tell what his real blood type was. In fact, during the imaginary stay in the clinic, no tests were done. Quite a bit, I know my indicators. Antonio nodded affirmatively. And do you agree to become a donor? Yes, because I don't feel sorry for people. Antonio replied calmly. Well, well, the procedure must be carried out as soon as possible. If you have finally decided everything, then in the morning we will go to the clinic. The next day they went to the medical center together. Antonio was a bit worried, but only because he was undergoing this procedure for the first time. Otherwise, he had no doubts whether to help or not. At the same time, before the start of the transfusion, he looked into the room where that bum lay. The man looked unimportant, his face was pale and his hands were covered in scabs. Most likely, during his wanderings, he contracted some kind of infection, or it was the body that reacted to the destructive lifestyle in such a way. With this, Antonio finished examining the drifter and headed for the treatment room. Soon this man was also brought there, all this time, while the transfusion was taking place, he was practically close. Antonio could see his blood flow to the homeless man. Sylvia, by the way, said that she was wearing very old things that barely covered her body from the cold. There is no doubt that man was at the bottom of social society. But how it got there remains a mystery. The procedure was completed successfully, and after a couple of hours, Antonio returned home. Sylvia stayed at the clinic to complete the paperwork. But after a while, she also arrived and from the door asked a question. Don't you think it's strange that your blood turns out to be similar? No, it doesn't seem like this sometimes happens in nature, answered Antonio, shaking his head negatively. Maybe so, but I haven't heard anything about it, Sylvia continued. Yes, it's okay, nothing strange, Antonio reassured her. You think the blood turned out to be similar. At the same time, he still had doubts that it was just an accident. Sylvia didn't believe in coincidences and decided to do a DNA test on him. A day later, the biological samples from the homeless man and Antonio were transferred to the laboratory. There, the Sylvius met halfway and promised to prepare the results in a week. All this time he was waiting for information. The inner instinct haunted her. A week later, the head of the laboratory called personally and was puzzled by the fact that Antonio and this wanderer were direct relatives. Sylvia almost had a fit. The fine weather brought the surgeon back to his senses. Looking at his worried face, he cautiously asked, Can I really be happy for my godson and his unborn child? What are you talking about? Sylvia asked in surprise. So, I thought you were pregnant and the attack seemed like a hormonal failure. The manager hesitated. No, unfortunately, as long as I'm not pregnant, shaking her head, said Sylvia. So what was it? The head did not loosen. 
You'll know anyway, so I'd better tell you. Sylvia told her the story of a homeless man who broke into her apartment. Having finished his story, he stared at the manager and asked, And what should I do now? Tell Antonio, the man replied with a shrug. He must know the truth, whatever it is. Yes, you're right, I will. Sylvia nodded and hurried home to please Antonio. When he heard this news from her, he was confused. Apparently, he did not expect the homeless person to be his direct relative. And if he perishes more frankly, then father. No, not how Antonio imagined their meeting. In any case, not with the person who fell to the bottom of life. On the other hand, it was impossible to say for sure that it was his fault. For this reason, to splash all his places, Antonio went with Sylvia to the clinic. By this time, the man was already able to independently move around the ward and communicate with medical personnel. Victor cautiously opened the living room door and greeted the homeless man. Buenos tardes. Hello, he replied apprehensively. My name is Antonio. He held out his hand. And I am George, replied the tramp, shaking him gently. Here's the thing, I became a donor and helped with the transfusion, Antonio said. Yes, thank you, the nurse has already told me everything. George nodded and again extended his hand in thanks. I will be grateful to you for the life of my life. I will light a candle for you in the church. It's good to hear it, of course, Antonio said. But I would like to know from you how you broke up with Ana Fernandez. The tramp even flinched at the mention of the woman's first and last name. Clenching her heart, she sat on the bed and whispered softly. It was so long ago. Still, I'm interested. Anthony stood his ground. And why do you need it? George asked cautiously, getting up from the bed. I'm your son. Antonio replied calmly. It cannot be. It cannot be. Said the tramp crying. It's all my fault. Relax, everything is in order. Nobody is going to blame you. Putting his hand on his shoulder, Antonio sat the homeless man back on the bed. And he began to talk about his past, already in colors and with all the details. It turned out that they had a warm relationship with Anna, they were even going to get married. But soon broke up, out of stupidity, George was jealous of his childhood friend. They had a big fight on this basis, although there was no reason for jealousy. However, Anna told him that she did not want to see him again. George, after they broke up, went to jail for a hooligan. Hitting the son of a rich father. But there was something to it. He sexually abused the girl and convinced her to be close. Jorge interceded, but did not calculate his strength. As a result, the rich man paid whoever needed it and was sent to the area for a long time. In general, the ex-boyfriend turned out to be unlucky. And Anna decided to completely erase it from her memory. Soon a son was born, whom he named Antonio. And so began a series of difficulties. There was no one to help her, so she turned around as best she could. And only a year later, Nicholas appeared on the horizon, who did not look at the fact that he already had a son. He fell madly in love with Anna and offered to live together. And he became Antonio's stepfather. We can say that Nicholas recognized the baby as his own son. True, he did not give his own last name. The child remained in the mother's metric. But Anna was happy about this, because the difficulties of her life were over. She didn't even think of George at the time. And he carefully concealed from Nicholas that Antonio's own father was in prison. 
This was the only secret that she never revealed to her husband. After his release, George made up his mind and got a job. However, he had to start from scratch. His parents had died by then, and his relatives had drifted away completely. The ex-con had to rebuild his life brick by brick. He didn't even think about visiting his old love. Their separation was too hard, besides, George did not want to enter his new family. And then he found out that she died in an accident, and he finally put an end to it. Besides, George knew nothing at all about his son. He went to jail when Anna didn't even have signs of pregnancy. She found out just two weeks later. But she didn't tell him, completely abandoning her dysfunctional father. He did not want his son to live with the idea that his biological father was in prison. And here it was impossible to blame her, since she acted according to the circumstances. Antonio thought about this topic more than once, and it was precisely these links that he was missing for the riddle to fully unfold. Now he knew what was really going on between his mother and his own father. Regarding George's injury, he said he was attacked by hooligans at the front door. They stabbed him and took all the money he had earned all day. Antonio got out of bed and walked around the room. Sylvia stood near the window and did not interfere in the conversation. For several minutes she looked at one point and then said, What happened is over, Dad, I think you need to forget the past and live in the present. Are you sure? Son. George asked cautiously. Yes, absolutely. Antonio agreed. There are no more reasons for anger, especially since the whole truth has been revealed. They both made mistakes and paid the price. I understand that it sounded cynical, but as it is, it's a pity mom didn't confess at the time. She wanted the best. George said with a shrug. Hugging his father tightly, Antonio began to cry. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Sorry, son, I did nothing, George said. It's not your fault, because you didn't know about my birth, Antonio replied. The most important thing is that you are alive, Dad, George replied with a smile and the three of them hugged each other even tighter. After being discharged from the clinic, Antonio took his father with him and settled him in a country house, where he also moved Adrian so that it would not be boring. The father soon found common ground with his son and slowly began to help him. It is clear that he had no knowledge in the trade, but he turned out to be an excellent supplier. Antonio had powerful support in the person of his own father. At the same time, he did not forget about his stepfather, who did a lot so that Antonio lived fully provided for. Together they went to the cemetery and honored his memory. Father silently looked at the tombstone and wept silently. Anna, as if she were alive, looked at him from the granite monument. She smiled as if nothing had happened, Antonio deliberately chose this photo so that mom would not look pessimistic. Life shone with new colors and soon Antonio, however, made an offer to Sylvia. Wedding rings have finally waited in the wings. And everything happened exactly in a country house, just as he had planned. The father warmly congratulated the young people and wished them well. In addition, he hinted that he would like to live to see his grandchildren. That would be a true happiness for me, George said, hugging his son and Sylvia. Somehow we do not think. Antonio hesitated with the answer, but everything can be. What do you say, love? We will wait and see, my love. Sylvia smiled back. A month later they were painted. The wedding was also held in a country house. All the friends and relatives of their families were invited there. 
There were so many guests that we had to put tables in the gazebo. But that made the wedding even more grand. Antonio and Silvia were the center of attention and received warm words of congratulations throughout the day. As well as gifts that the guests did not spare. And after a couple of months, Sylvia pleased the family with the news of her pregnancy. The men were delighted. If you liked the story, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel.